Today, we are going to dive more into foods and specifically foods that you should never eat, foods that are bad for you. So let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a comprehensive list of bad foods so you never have to be confused again about what bad foods are. It's going to be foods that are spoiled, foods that you are allergic to, foods that you have sensitivities to, foods that cause digestive distress, foods that you don't like, and foods that don't align with your beliefs. So for example, if you're vegan, then not having animal products. But way too often, people try to define food as either good or bad. And you've probably heard it before of someone saying, oh, that food is bad for you, or that is a good food for you. But I think it's time that we looked at foods differently, or at the very least, labeled them differently. You see, good and bad are relative terms, meaning that they need to be considered and judged in relation to other things. And it's also a good note to make here that too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Even something like water, which we have all been told and know that is extremely good for us, but there is a point where too much water is bad for us. Same with something like exercise. Exercise is incredible for us, but that doesn't mean that we should exercise 24 7 because then it can become bad for us. I like to think about food on some sort of gradient or spectrum. And some of the classifications that I like to put food in, instead of using terms just like good or bad, is being able to say food is nutrient dense or food is nutrient sparse or somewhere on that gradient in between. Or food can be calorically dense or it can be calorically sparse, or somewhere on the gradient in between. So to be able to give you some examples of this, because I know I am a big, big fan of examples to be able to connect things in my brain, let's go ahead and take some of these categories and talk about foods that fall into these. So let's take something that is nutrient-dense and calorically dense. That could be a great example of something like an avocado or an egg or salmon. These are all things that are high in calories, but they are also very high in nutrients. So let's take the avocado, for example. An avocado, let's take a medium avocado, has about 240 calories, and that's 13 carbs, 3 fat, and 22 grams of fat. Now, if we just boiled it down to the macros, and let's say that there was a cookie or cheese or something to that matter that had that high of fat, we might classify it as bad in today's society. But really being able to look at these different classifications allows us to look at food differently. So within an avocado, it has phytonutrients, as fat-soluble vitamins, as monosaturated fats, and that's going to be like omega-3 fatty acids, as fiber and potassium, and actually more potassium than a banana, and it has carotenoids in it, which can help protect you from disease and have had correlations when it comes to eye health and your immune system. Now, you might have also heard the term healthy fat in relation to avocados. And I think the biggest discernment I always like to make when it comes to what is healthy fat versus not healthy fat is going to be looking at those omega-3 fatty acids like I talked about earlier. So there are going to be omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. And in the Western diet, it's something where we have a lot of omega-6 fatty acids in our food. And the ratio should be from omega-3 or omega-6 to omega-3, if we're looking at the ratio in that order, it should be about a one-to-one ratio or a two-to-one ratio. And there have been studies to show that it's about a 13 to 16 to one ratio. So we have a very high amount of omega-6 fatty acids in our food. So being able to have something that has omega-3 fatty acids in it, like an avocado, is where that coined term healthy fat comes from because those omega-3 fatty acids help to balance that ratio if we have a lot of foods that have that omega-6 fatty acids in it. So if we're looking at just macros, you could say, hey, an avocado has a lot of fat and fat is often demonized and fat is bad for me. But fat is actually going to be a major regulator of your hormones and making sure that you have good hormonal health. 
So that is where the term healthy fat comes from. So an avocado, and like I use some of those other examples of eggs or salmon, are great examples of something that's high in calories, but also high in nutrients. And that also allows us to break down the thought that things that are high in calories are bad for us because they are not. It also depends at the portion or the amount that you intake things in, where if my only source of nutrients is just from an avocado and I am not getting anything else in, then again, that's where things can turn towards that worse end. Let's go ahead and look at something that might be nutrient dense, but is calorically sparse. And I think a great example of this would be something like strawberries. So if we take one cup of strawberries, that's only 49 calories. So that is a lot less than the 240 calories of that avocado there. And that would be around half a gram of fat, one gram of protein, and 20 grams of carbs, and a few grams of fiber there as well. Uh, And when we talk about the nutrients, in strawberries, about eight berries provides more vitamin C than an orange. And so it has those minerals in place there, along with things like calcium, iron, potassium, folate, and magnesium. And then strawberries also have antioxidants in it. So it's something that is high in nutrients, but low in calories. So let's go ahead and look into another quadrant here. So if we look at something that's nutrient sparse and calorically sparse. So again, this would be something that doesn't have a lot of nutrients, but also doesn't have a lot of calories. And I think a great example of this would be something like a rice cake. And I'll go ahead and use the plain rice cakes as an example here. And those are only 35 calories per rice cake, which is pretty low for a snack. So low in calories. Now they do have nine grams of whole grains per serving if we're looking at the Quaker one. But if we just look at a plain rice cake, then again, not much when it comes to nutrients. And if you look at the back label, you'll even see when it's listing out some of those minerals that it's at 0% of our daily value that we need. So not a lot of nutrients, but very low calories as well. And it's something where it's about zero fat, zero to one gram of protein, uh, seven grams of carbs, and no fiber. So this is something where just because it doesn't have nutrients doesn't mean that it's not good for us, but it also is something that we want to have in balance to make sure that we're getting enough nutrients in place. So we'll go on on to the last quadrant, which is the one that I feel like people struggle with the most when it comes to classifying food. And this is going to be something that is nutrient sparse and calorically dense. So not a lot of nutrients, but a lot of calories. So let's use something like a cookie, for example. And I'm going to go ahead and use just the Kroger brand bakery cookies because there are a million different cookies out there that we could look at what the breakdown of every ingredient is. But I'll just go ahead and use that as an example. And that has about 140 calories per cookie. And that would be about 7 grams of fat, 20 grams of carbs, and 1 gram of protein. And with this, the big thing within it not having nutrients is, again, those calories are higher. But with that, if we look at the nutrition label, we see it has a very long ingredient list and it has added sugars and oils. And I want to make it very clear, again, this is the quadrant most people struggle with of this means that cookies are bad for you because they don't give you any nutrients and they're just high in calories. So it's empty calories. But I don't think that cookies are bad for you. In fact, I think that they can be great for you. And I'm not trying to sell you on some different cookie or some healthified cookie. I am a strong believer of two things. Your soul needs to be fed too. And then all foods fit, but there does need to be a middle ground that you find when we're balancing the aspect of good nutrition. Because food and nutrition are two different things. And good nutrition for one person can look completely different than good nutrition for another person. There might still be some core tenants that have that carryover from person to person, but food in and of itself might look different for that person. So you can't eat cookies for the only food choice that you have in 
everything that you eat, but we also don't need to label cookies as bad and ban them from our diet. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. You for should you. lift heavy. High reps. Carbs low are needed. Keto squats are bad for your squats knees. Are great you for should your squat ass to grass. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one on one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. I think it's really important to ask the question of what is food to you? What do you want food to be for you? And what do you imagine it could be for you? Because food is a very confusing topic. Nutrition is a very confusing topic. But food is the stuff that we eat, and it fuels our bodies. It's micronutrients, and it's macronutrients, but it is so much more than just fuel. It is still fuel, and we do need to remember that it does help us perform and allow us to be our best, but it is more than fuel. Because as humans, we are this incredibly complex, self-regulating, and dynamically responsive beings. We aren't machines that have simple inputs and outputs. And to simplify food just down to fuel would negate a huge part of being a human being. As humans, we're not just calorie accountants. Food is information. And when we eat, we deliver messages to our body. Do this don't do this, release this hormone, don't release that one, express this protein, don't express that one, and so on. Food is instructions and information and processing that information. And food is smart. Like I said, we aren't a machine. We're human, which is magical in and of itself. And if food was just fuel, then we would just be that semi-dumb, machine or calorie accountant. But we are more than that, and our body deserves that recognition. And we also deserve to look at food more than just the calories it is or the macros that they have. So food is information. Food is instructions. Food is fuel. Food is energy. Food is exciting. Food is tasty. Food is smart. Food is packed with meaning. Food tells a story. Food is friendships. Food is your grandma's cooking, and food is how we experience culture, and food is very fun all in all. And I think it's really important to be able to classify and look at food differently to really be able to figure out what good nutrition is. Because if we do just boil down food to good and bad, we forget how relative those terms are and how we need to look at the bigger picture. If you didn't catch our last episode, Alex and I did a Q&A all about nutrition, and the episode after this one is going to be us going over some more nutrition questions that you have. We understand it's an extremely confusing topic, so go ahead, let us know if you have any questions, and we are happy to answer them and hopefully make things a little bit clearer for you. And if you do work really well off of visuals, I will have a post linked down below that shows the visual of these foods on on the different gradients and the different quadrants to allow you to see what that all looks like. But feel free to share this with a friend that might struggle with food or feel like food does need to be classified as just good or bad. And hopefully they will be able to have a little bit more information about what food is and give them some insight on what good nutrition looks like to them. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love for you to comment down below on what does good nutrition look like for you. Um, and again, any other questions that you have, but we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching and listening.